راغبا في كل علم نافع ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه نطور أدواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن هذا كتاب الله روح قلوبنا خير الدروس تعلم القرآن بشرى لنا زاد أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين I start in the name of Allah the compassion the merciful the Lord of the worlds سبحانه وتعالى May glory be to him وأصلي وأسلم على نبينا محمد and, I, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his prophet Muhammad his family his companions and his followers all until the day of resurrection I welcome you to this new lesson from the series of tafsir at Zad Academy and today we are continuing the interpretation or tafsir of the last three ayahs of Surah Al-Baqarah and we uh, came to the ayah, the last ayah, 286 and this is the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها Allah does not ask a soul to bear anything beyond its capacity or ability and we already talked about how this was difficult when it was revealed uh, the ayah before that 284 when it was revealed upon the prophet peace be upon him and the sahaba ridwanullahi alayhim heard it and the, it became they became so distressed and anxious how could how could allah be uh, holding them accountable for even certain things that come across their minds but then Allah revealed this ayah to abrogate that ayah, at meaning to abrogate the, uh, what it entails, uh, but still in reading uh, as part of the Qur'an. And this shows the mercy and kindness upon this ummah by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, regarding wus'aha, al-wus'a, wus'a meaning the ability and capacity, and Allah does not ask uh, a, a, a soul to bear anything beyond its ability, uh, something that is, for example, impossible, asking uh, the uh, uh, blind to see or asking uh, any, the, the, the crippled to, to walk and so on, and, uh, or asking someone to do a certain kind of worship that this person is not able to do then Allah is not going to do this. That part of his own justice, subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَهَا مَا كَسَبَتْ For it, what it attains of good. وَعَلَيْهَا مَا كَسَبَتْ And against it is what it, it uh, earned of, of bad. And we uh, touched upon this meaning earlier by saying لَهَا مَا كَسَبَتْ وَعَلَيْهَا مَا كَسَبَتْ You see, because their kasaba is uh, easily... Um, attaining and, and, and gaining. As for iktasabat, you're putting some exert uh, or effort there in order to, to gain it. So uh, anything that is light or even any good that you do, even with, with little work or little effort, then it will be accepted. Uh, even, even only with the intention, because if you intend to do something good, and you did not do it, Allah will write it for you as, uh, uh, as good and will be for you. Uh, but f as for the opposite, when you earn something bad, then obviously it will be written against you. But if you intend to do something bad and then you stopped from doing it, not because of any other reason than, than fear of Allah or you said that, no, that is wrong, I'm not supposed to do it, then Allah will write it for you as hasana or good. Subhanallah. You have a reward even for um, changing your mind regarding doing 
uh, something bad with the intention to do it for Allah's sake, subhanahu wa ta'ala. رَبَّنَا لَا تُؤَاخِذْنَا إِن نَسِينَا أَوْ أَخْطَانَا O Allah, do not punish us for something that we did out of forgiveness or out of uh, mistake. What is the difference between forgiveness and mistake? Well, forgiveness is when your heart escapes this, when, it, when the idea escapes your heart and you forgotten and, and then it didn't come to your mind to do um, the, the, the right thing or you, you did something, something wrong. Um, as for the uh, mistake is that you intended to do something permissible, but then you, you fell into something that is uh, uh, you're not allowed to do. So that is the difference between forgiveness and uh, mistake. In the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Prophet said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَضَعَ عَنْ أُمَّتِي الْخَطَأَ وَالنِّسْيَانَ وَمَسْتُكْرِهُ عَلَيْهِ That Allah has put down, meaning will not hold them accountable to uh, my ummah, the mistake and forgiveness uh, and whatever they were forced to do. So if you're forced to do something against your own will, then you'll, you'll not be held accountable to that. This hadith was reported by Ibn Majah, uh, rahimahullah. رَبَّنَا وَلَا تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْنَا إِصْرًا كَمَا حَمَلْتَهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِنَا إِصْرًا meaning a burden that is so heavy and which will hold you to your place and meaning any hard uh, uh, commitment or commandment or something that is very, very difficult to, to do or even you can do but even with, with a hardship, then of course, yes, yes, we know sometimes there are certain things that need some effort and they may be a bit, a bit hard and you need to exert some effort in it, but not too hard that you fell down and you, you break, you cannot, you cannot do it. Uh, the, uh, uh, and, and because Allah wanted to lessen the burden on this ummah, unlike what he did upon the earlier ummahs before um, in the hadith when uh, uh, the Prophet uh, said uh, uh, this ayah, this ayah, Allah says, Naam, yes, yes, when he heard this dua, Rabbana la tuakhidna in nasina wa akhtana, Rabbana wa la tahmil alayna isran kama hamaltahu ala ladina min qablina. Allah says yes. Allah says yes in this regard. And he said, Qad fa'altu. I have, I have done so. Meaning that he accepted this dua. Rabbana wa la tuhammilna ma la taqat lana bihi. Meaning things that we cannot do or we cannot bear. That's why when a person, uh, a sinner commits a sin, he needs uh, three things. He needs afu, meaning that he... Uh, he be forgiven what is between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, he needs maghfirah, which is to hide it from uh, uh, people so they will not, uh, he will not be disclosed and exposed to, uh, to people uh, and uh, known by doing this bad thing. Or, and uh, thirdly, to protect a person from falling into a similar uh, uh, bad deed uh, later on. So you need afu, maghfira, and rahma. That these are the three things which are found in this ayah. Wa'fu anna, wa'fir lana, warhamna. Three great meanings that we need to do, and this is part of the uh, guidance and tawfiq for the uh, ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam that Allah gave them this dua so that they can seek it from Allah and Allah will respond to them and Allah says at the end Anta Mawlana you are our protector you are our supporter and we depend on you and we seek help from you so this talk about Mawlana who's, who's Mawla sometimes people uh, go uh, into bad uh, meaning of mawla. Mawla is, is some, somebody who's from among human beings. Well, the mawla is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the wilaya of Allah is of two kinds, general one and special one. The general one is for everyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a, uh, a wilaya for everyone. As he said, وَرُدُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ 
مولاهم الحق وضل عنهم ما كانوا يفترون and they were returned to Allah سبحانه وتعالى who's their mawla the true mawla meaning the true supporter and true protector and there is a special wilaya special wilaya for the believers because Allah says Allah is the wali who is the one who is the one who is the one who is the is the wali or supporter and um, helper of the, the believing uh, men and women who, whom he gets out from darkness or darknesses into light. And in Surah Al-Imran, Wallahu waliyul mu'min, and Allah is the wali uh, of the believers, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the end he says, Fansurna ala al-qawmi al-kafirin. So uh, give us victory over the disbelieving people, those who rejected your religion, denied your rights, they denied your oneness, uh, glory be to you, and the message of your prophet, and they worshipped other than you. Uh, uh, so that's, that's uh, the kind of, of dua, great dua at the end of this. And that's why if you read it often and read it particularly uh, uh, every night, You'll be protected by Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you in this regard and will protect you and keep you um, very, very close to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, uh, the, these, uh, these three ayahs are so great and we'll talk more inshallah about the meaning, uh, the benefits, some of the benefits of these ayahs and also some uh, closing remarks regarding the, uh, uh, these three ayahs and the tafsir in general, and being, inshallah, able to, uh, uh, to, to read more, to expand your knowledge in this field. It's so significant and so important to be um, uh, always knowledgeable and understand uh, what every ayah means and the context in which it was revealed and and how it was revealed and the reason for its revelation in order to put it in context and to understand its meaning and to really make it close to your heart and enjoy, enjoy uh, reading and the, the glorious Quran because the more you know it, the more you understand it, the better it will be to you and, the, and, and then the more closest it is to you. So until I see you, inshallah, in the coming lesson, I leave you with Allah's care and protection. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يا راغبا في كل علم نافع ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه مطور أدواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن هذا كتاب الله روح قلوبنا خير الدروس تعلم القرآن بشرى ننازات أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان